and welcome back to the crochet crowd and on behalf of my friends at lily sugar and cream we are presenting you this beautiful little spring wreath and it has actually four different patterns that go around this wreath and again the ideas that you're seeing here can actually go further into other things uh, that you want to decorate as well so let's uh, just examine what we have and so we have a butterfly Okay, and I've actually done my butterfly a little differently than what they've suggested. Um, they've suggested using glue to do the centerpiece on the back end. And then I've actually added a little bit of uh, antenna to it as well. So you have the butterfly. You have a, just a simple leaf. Okay, and the pattern gives you how many leaves and, and butterflies and all that stuff you're going to need. So a leaf. The daffodil. Not a very hard pattern to do, it's just a little bit, um, just to get started was a kind of like, to understand the pattern was a little bit difficult. And of course then we have the bell flower with the pistol that's coming out of the bottom. I found this one was kind of the pain of the, all the four of them. So uh, let's get started. And So we're now going to work on the daffodil. And the daffodil is actually a little more complex than it appears. Um, the directions are horrendous to read, but their directions are actually easy. They're just a matter of understanding them. And so let's uh, go along. Bear with me on this particular tutorial as we get started. So let's uh, grab the complementary yarn. So the actual starting yarn is actually going to be the petal yarn. Okay, so this yellow is actually done afterward. So let's uh, begin. So I'm just going to choose white just for the sake of uh, um, just doing something like that. And now it's saying to chain two. Okay, so let's just slip it in. That does not count as one that's already on there. So one and two. And now it's saying to do six single crochet second from the hook. Okay, so let's begin to do that. So slipping it in, pulling it through, and then single. And what I want to do now is that I want to put a stitch marker in. Okay, this is something that I regretted not doing afterwards. So that's, let's mark that spot as being single crocheted. So let's do number two. So going in. And so number two, let's put another stitch marker in. Number three. The reason for it is that there's six edges on this, and these are not always easy to tell where they are. Okay, so that was three. That was four. be five. five and now this is six so I got lots of stitch markers on here so six okay I'm just gonna have to remember that and now what we want to do is just slip it to the very first one which is where the chain our first crochet marker is okay so slip it Okay, so now that I know that's where the first one is, I'm going to take out the very first one. Okay, and I'm going to replace it to the sixth one that was in behind. Okay, even if you're off on this one, I don't think it matters too much. Um, I'm, I think I'm off by one stitch in the center, but you really can't tell that here. So let's uh, begin to do our next um, step as we go along. So we're actually going to be building up on one petal all the way and then coming back down to the center. So building center, building center. Okay, so what you cannot really see here is that you got actually two loops, okay? And so then there's the front loop and the back loop. And for professional crocheters or novices, they understand exactly what that means. And so it's asking us to go in the back loop only. Okay, so let's chain up one, okay? And single crochet into the back loop. And in this case, because the way I slip stitch, the back loop is actually already exposed and I can see it. So that was considered one single crochet, two single crochet okay and now it's asking you to turn it okay so it's chain one and turn it so now it's facing away from you just like so so now it's asking you to double up the amount so we're gonna put in the back okay in the back loop only okay so you got your front loop and your back loop so you wanna just put into your back loop only one so you wanna put two single crochets into your back loop and remember, you only have two stitches to work with at this point. Okay. 
Okay, so that was one and two into the same one. And now the next one is into the back loop as well. So two single crochets in a row. Okay, so that was considered row number two. And now three, four, and five are going to be the exact identical. So let's rotate it, chain one. Okay, and you make sure it's just like when you go to single crochet across that you have to do get the first one that you come out of, but only go in the back loop only. So it's one. Okay, two, and I always keep count as I go across. You only should have four, three, and that's four. So that was row number three. Let's turn it, chain one. Okay, going into the very first one in the back loop only. Okay, so it was one, two, three and four, turn it, chain one, okay, and this is the number five, so it's one, two, three, and four. It's the final. Now, it's doing the back loops only because it's causing it to have texture, but uh, that's up to you. So now what we want to do is start to do two together slash one. So how you do that? So you want to chain one. Okay, you want it to go into your very first like you just did. You want to pull through the material and hold. Go into the next one, which will be your second. Pull through the material and hold. There will be three, and then pull through all three. Okay, so let's go into your next one. So go through, pull through, and hold. Okay, and this is the final. This is number four. Now you have three on your hook. Pull through. And now it's saying to chain three. So one, two, and three. And now it's telling you to single a slip stitch your way all the way back to the center of the ring. Okay, so what we want to just do is just randomly place a slip stitch in different sections of your petal all the way down. But you want to make sure that when you're doing that, you're not uh, causing your petal to form any weird shapes by being too tight so make sure you do give it a little bit of slack but not to the point where it's so noticeable either so come all the way back down okay and now this is beginning to work on the next one here okay so let's take a quick break and i'll be right back okay so we're now back at the bottom and what we need to do is that we're looking at the next stop, uh, spot to go into on the ring and i've already got my markers these markers make it a lot easier by the way but you don't want your petals to be the point where they're um, like actually just completely attached to each other. So what they suggest is that you just do want a chaining of one. So then it will make the, each petal a little more flexible. So it's a lot more separated from the other one. Okay, if that makes any sense. And now this happens to already be in the back loop, but you just want the back loop only. So I can take that out safely because I know. And so we just want to do exactly what we just did before. So we want to put two single crochets into that same back loop. Okay, let's rotate it and chain one. And so now let's double the size. So in order to double it, you just got to go in and put two single crochets into the same spot. Okay, and let's go to the second one over and do the same thing. So now you've just increased it to a four. Okay, so let's rotate back, chain one. And so then this is be uh, level three and five. Uh, three to five so it's just going into the back loops again all the way across and there's only four stitches again reading the directions on this was really tough um, it was one of the toughest uh, ones I did for the entire flower tutorials that I've been working on and chaining a one and going again this is the row number four Now, if you're ever in doubt what row, if you've lost count or if you're talking too much or somebody's yelling at you to make dinner, um, you can always just eye it up with the next one and just compare the lumps that you can see and compare it to the lumps that you're over here. So i got one more to go. This is row number five. That was five. So now we, what we want to do is now pull the two together slash one. So chain up one, going into the back loop of the first one, pulling it through and hold. Going to the next one, pull through and hold. So you have three, pull through all three. So I do it again. So pulling it through and hold. 
we're going to hold, pulling it through all three, and then one, two, and three. So it actually makes sense now because you always got to finish on this side because the actual, when you go to lay it over, it should be going in the direction of where you're actually coming back to do more. Okay, so if you're left-handed, then you would uh, be finishing on the other side. Okay, so you just want to slip it. And again, just be gen uh, generous with your yarn to allow it to slip without pulling the, the, the flower to make it too tight to cause it to do a really weird um, section. So that when, when we're done that, let's chain one and now come back down to the next one on the line. Okay, so let's pull that out. That's the very next one. We know where it is now. And let's go into the back loop only. So back loop only for chaining a, or for two single crochets. So one and two. Let's turn it. One. Okay, next one is we're gonna put two into that same hole to cause it to go to four stitches. Okay, the next one is one and two. Turn it chain one so this is between three and five so just one in each of the four okay so that was three so let's go through this will be row number four so just got to keep going it makes total sense once you get into the rhythm of this bad boy. Okay, rotating it again, chain one. Okay, this is row number five. Okay, and now let's turn it again, chain one. And now let's two together one. So it's going into the first one, pull it through and hold. Next one, pull through and hold, pull through all two, uh, all three, and then do it again. And then one, two, and three. And again, I'm turning it so it's going to lay over top and slip it all the way down to the center. So that basically that chaining of three causes the top of the flower to have a nice rounded edge to it and we just want to slip stitch it all the way back down to the center. So just going to continue to do that all the way around. I don't think I need to show you any more uh, how to do that and at the end so basically now chain one again and restart and you only have three more petals to go. So let's meet up uh, when we go to start uh, fastening off this and starting up just doing the, the tulip or the daffodil section in the middle. So now coming to the very end of this to a particular round and what I want to do now is that I just want to slip stitch it to the very starting and I want to cast it off as well. So we're fastening it off, fasten it off. So using my Westcott scissors, I'm just going to tighten everything together and again I just want to weave in. So this is not one of those flowers where you can make it really three dimensional really easily because of the way that you went down on the one side and because the one side will have all the slipping down of it on the petal and the other side has just basically growing up as you've moved up every row you really can't really do it really successfully and be really tidy about it so this is uh, what we have so far okay so I'm just going to trim that off and now I don't really want to get confused on which side that I've been working on so I'm not going to um, just start flipping it around at random but I can really tell because of you know I'm experienced crochet what side is up and what side's down Okay, so the, the material will tend to bowl up just like so, so that is your upside just in case you decide to flip it upside down or whatever. So now I want you to, to get your stitch markers back out, and now I want you to look carefully here. So basically I want you to look in the center of all of the different uh, projects here. Okay, in all of the different... Okay, so this is my second attempt to show you what I need to do. So this actually, uh, center of the pistol is actually... Um, going on the front loops. Remember how we were going on the back loops? So the, the, the loops are really hard to tell exactly where those things are uh, once you've gotten to this point. And actually, the fact, the whole thing pulls really tight together. 
So what I would suggest to you is that just look at it and determine what you want to do. So I'm going to cheat. Okay, so this is my cheating version of this in order to make it work. So I'm just going to create my next material. And so if you're going to follow the directions, please don't email me and say I cheated because I know I did. So what I'm going to do, instead of trying to get into the front loops, I'm just going to go into the actual sections that are very visible uh, separated out. Okay. So I'm just going to go in from behind and pulling it through. I'm just going to attach it together. Okay. So now what I want to do is go into the next one that appears to be separated. So first single crochet. Okay, I'm going to go into the next one. See, those are very easy to see. Okay, I'm going to go into the next one. I'm going to go into the next one. So I'm just kind of going into an area that I feel comfortable with. It's actually at the right distance from the center as far as I'm concerned even though I am cheating, so I'd probably be making up lies. So let's, uh, I'm going to slip it now to the very start, okay, and that will complete the one section. So that's actually a really good idea even for Daisy, just to kind of fill in the, the center. But we're not done yet, so let's uh, continue along with your next rotation. Okay, so what I want to do is I don't want to put a slip marker or a slip marker into the end of the petal so I know which one is actually going all the way around. So now what I want to do, because I am cheating, I might as well just make up my own rules as I go. So I'm just going to slip, or just going to do one chain, and I'm just going to go into the next one, and I'm going to put two single crochets right in the same spot. Okay, and this will make the center of the of the trump they calling it the trumpet on the pattern but the it'll make the the trumpet start to grow outward just like a regular daffodil so just putting in two into each one so basically you're doubling up their rotation size by doing that it's coming around Finally, the last one because this is where the petal is sitting. Okay, and I want to slip stitch it to the very starting one so that it brings it to be equal. Okay, and so let's move on to your next one here. And so, what we want to do is saying now to chain one. Okay, so I'm going to come back to the directions and go into the next one available, single crochet, okay, chain one, okay, go into the very next one, so single crochet, chain one, and so then it makes the top of the trumpet look a little bit inconsistent, like a, with a ruffle, and that's exactly what you're looking for as far as being able to do that properly, so to do that all the way around, so single crochet, chain one. And also, too, because you are chaining one, it's giving the trumpet an opportunity to uh, branch outward. So chain one. It's giving it an opportunity to branch outward, and just like a regular flower would be. And then at the very end, just make sure you come back into the area, and we want to slip stitch it shut. Okay, so that's using your Westcott scissors. Okay, just pulling it through. And now I just kind of want to weave in the, using the weaving technique, I just want to weave that in all the way around. So this is the daffodil pattern provided by um, Lily Sugars and Cream and I really like this pattern. It was really an easy way to go. You can create that nice wreath that they show in their uh, online thing because I'll probably be providing a link for that. And uh, let's take that out. 
and voila so there you go so there's how you do it and so I cheated a little bit so my trumpet sticks out a little bit more than what the original was but again that the creativity is up to you and you might want to fold that in even more so um, that is how you do your daffodil so thank you so much for joining us today everybody and we hope you're having a great day